welcome to a special episode of the Downtown Podcast where we're taking some time out to actually learn about Shift, which is a new car sharing program. This is Zach Ware. He's the CEO of Shift, and you are going to tell us about all these cool cars, I guess we can start driving? Yeah, yeah. So we just, uh, in the last week, we invited our first members in, a small group of people in a beta membership um, to get a sense for how our systems are working. One of the things I tell a lot of people that, that I talk to is that we set out to build an incredible um, company that went beyond car sharing and did more things than your car could do or, or even a driver could do. And in the process, became a pretty formidable tech company. Uh, we had to build right. all of our own in-car hardware. We had to build all of our own, obviously, forward-facing applications as well as back-end things. And, and so uh, it's taken about a year for us to get ready. And people, I think, have been really impatient with our, our, uh, our not launching. But I think when you interact with our company today, you're going to find that there are a whole lot of things that we've done to, to make mobility easier and, and seamless, uh, both from the front-end user experience and stuff, a lot of stuff you don't see. Tell me about the front-end experience. What is a regular person? It's, it's super simple. One of the things that sets us apart from, I think, a lot of other companies is that our, our goal is to have you on your way within five minutes. It's our promise. The, the product we're selling you is not a transportation product. It's not a technology product. It's a promise. And so our goal is, is for you to open the app whenever you're thinking about going somewhere. Uh, and you indicate to us, we know where you are at that point. You indicate to us, sort of, am I taking a short, medium, or a long trip? Uh, do I want to drive, ride, or bike? And from those, those answers, we match you with the right car for that experience. So what we found is that if you think about a company like Zipcar, uh, you, you are presented with a list of cars. And the thing you're going to choose is very likely going to be the thing that's most like what you have right now. Hmm. We, we tend to buy cars and, and, and make transportation decisions based on X factors. Like, like I have a big, gigantic car because one, once or twice a year, I need to transport six people and a bunch of crap. All oh, right. But right. if you don't need that every single time. Right. Most of the time, I, my, my journeys and what I've actually right. found is right. I've been timing it this week in our, using, using Shift. Most of my journeys are surprisingly short. Um, I actually stopped at the store and went to uh, and parked at a station from my house to a store to a station, and it was literally five minutes. And in my head, I would think that would be like a 20 minute thing. <laughs> but, but now that I have a timer sort of timing yeah. what I'm doing, I'm like, wow, actually, the majority of the trips that I'm taking are, are really short. And that's actually what we've found surprisingly uh, over the last week and looking at the data is that the average trip for our even our beta members is a lot shorter than most of us think it would be. Hmm. So what we want to be able to do is, is have enough vehicles and enough options within five minutes of you so that the idea of getting going somewhere is no longer like, oh, it's going to be so hard, i got to find parking, etc. We want you to be able to do more things in a day. Um, so in a given day, if, if it, if mobility were the thing that was stopping you from doing five things that you normally would have done, if we can if we can reduce those barriers, both the financial barrier of like I don't want to pay for it, as well right. as the, the headache of having to find a car, park a car, you maybe get a taxi, like, etc. Such a paradigm shift to think yeah. about cars in that way, because usually you have one car, yeah. right? But now if you're thinking like, is it the right tool for the right situation? Yeah, because I guess I would be sold on like, oh, you should get this Tesla. You'll look really cool. Right. Like everyone will think you're awesome. But and you I'm like, but it, I'm only need that like Saturday night. Yeah, like, in the if, afternoon. If you think about it, Tesla is a gigantic four door vehicle. Like, right. <laughs> like right. having having dozens of Teslas driving from from right. one part of downtown to the other would just create a big old bumper car. But what's interesting for for us is that in the in a parking space that would that would normally hold one Tesla, we can put as many as three smart cars or Twizzies. Right. So you think about the capacity, the the ability to to have more vehicles vehicles that are available for more members to do things, having a four-door car is just not the most efficient way to do it. Okay, so explain Twizy. Like, so explain the different cars. Let's go sure. biggest to smallest, maybe. So as a company, the three things we do are provide a, a ways for you within five minutes to be driving, riding, or biking. And to do that, obviously, we have a fleet of bikes um, that you'll be seeing uh, rolling out to, to uh, the neighborhood in the next few weeks. Um, we have small, medium, and large cars. And we have vehicles that have mostly electric, but we have vehicles that have a, a gas backup so that we, for that time when you're going to leave town or you're going to be doing a lot oh, okay. of things, you have gotcha. essentially have a limited range. Um, so our fleet consists of, of currently of smart electric drives, um, Tesla Model S's, as well as Chevrolet Volts. Um, and the way we, we match people to cars is based on the nature of the journey. So if you think about a list of available cars, we uh, if we know that you're taking a short trip within the neighborhood, the first car we're going to match you to right now is a smart. Uh, soon we're going to be adding a, a vehicle that we've been that we've been working for over a year to import from France uh, from Renault called the Twizy. 
Um, it's a two. That's surprisingly, it's a two-seater car. It doesn't look like one. Name, yeah. And in our actually, our general counsel is what's like six ten, six eleven. He and his dad both fit in it very well. Um, okay. So we know that it's, it, it looks really compact, but it's actually not that compact. It's a ton of fun to drive. Um, so we think it's actually the way I've, I've described it is it's kind of like a, an enhanced bike. It's like a bike with a canopy. Okay. Um, it goes twenty five miles an hour. Uh, it gets you from point A to point B really, really quickly. It's open air, but really aerodynamic. You don't get wind blown um, and it's it's the we think uh, the right car for for sort of getting around town really quickly and as those are are, are used up we have our smarts as well okay and then so how many like you just have bikes but you also have um uh, any of the trikes or any of the other kind of like electric cars? You know, we, we didn't we didn't do a, a trikes or scooters or, or boards. Okay. Our, our our biggest challenge was you know we're very we're very we're very utilitarian company. So it sounds like you know we have these Teslas, but it, it turned out that we were looking for a vehicle with roughly 300 miles range that was that was four doors and seat, seated five, um, and the only ve- and we wanted it to be electric where possible, and the only vehicle that qualified was a Tesla. Um, we believe in this concept of one problem, one solution. So if the problem is I need to I need to go a short distance within the core of the neighborhood or larger part of the city, we don't want to have five different choices for you. We want there to be one option that fits. So that way we okay. reduce the confusion, reduce the choice. Um, so we uh, we have uh, the bikes are, are an interesting you know one mile or less opportunity. Um, you know smarts and so forth are very easy to understand. When you get into to scooters and boards. There's a training curve, and we couldn't. Right. You know, we unfortunately. <laughs> I don't think about that, but yeah. yeah. So it's really, it'd be really cool. Not everybody has but, that skateboard skill. Yeah, not everybody has skateboard skills. How do we lock down the remotes for the skateboards? Um, you know, the 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 trike is, is cool, but um, there's still a little bit of a danger to it because it goes really fast and you're not terribly pre- protected. So we right. did want to have a situation where we created so much choice. Right. Uh, What's the, the, what about the emphasis on electricity? You know, it's 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 funny from an, it, it's like it's similar to when we built. The Zappos campus, we never sought out to be legal certified. We we said we want to make the right decision for employees and the right decision for the environment, but we're not going to build to lead standards because we don't agree with all of them. For example, we we got less points for water cons- water conservation at the campus than we did for walk-off mats, which are these things that stop kind of trash from coming into the building. Um, so obviously, something's a little off about this. <laughs> right. You know, when you're in Las right. Vegas, you want to be really water conscious, don't really care about trash on the floor. Um, right, so, like instead of just getting a certificate, actually thinking yeah. about the use case. Yeah, exactly. Right and it just company. happened that we ended up being legal certified there. Yeah. So here, um, we wanted to, we felt like if we're going to build a massive fleet of vehicles and, and hopefully get a lot of cars off the road as a result of our, 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 one of our goals is to not get rid of your car, but to make your car worthless and use, or useless. We can, if we can pull that off, the, the, the best thing we can do then is to try to find ways for our fleet to be less abrasive to the environment. So the last thing we wanted to do when we started thinking about the, you know, our ride product, Valley Plus, the last thing we wanted to do was put 30 town car sedans on the road that are spewing out you know, gunk. Um, right. So if we could pull it off, we wanted to go electric. But we knew that an electric vehicle like the Tesla, yeah. an owner has a sense of things like the supercharger network, how you charge. But a person who uses it once every two months might not. And so we can't let you leave town, for example, in a Tesla because you may just choose to go to Yosemite and there's not a supercharger on the way. And right, so right. that's why we brought the Volt into the system. So we could have the, but mostly electric for city driving, gotcha. but if you what get makes low sense power, it just generator kicks on and there you go. Um, okay, so when I've rented cars in the past, I always have to, like, right before I return it, go to the gas station, fill it up. I know most of these are electric, but how does that work? Do you guys yeah. take care of the charging or we do, do we so leave it? The building that we're in right now is our nerve center. Um, and our central nerve center is one of the largest, actually, and again, accidentally, one of the largest electric vehicle charging stations in the country. Oh, right. um, we have nearly a megawatt of power capacity coming into the building, uh, which is crazy. Um, we, uh, our, our team basically looks at, if you think about how, how bike, the bike sharing system works, that a lot of vehicles will end up in one place because we offer unlimited station to station one-way drives uh, mm-hmm. for, for our small cars. So you can go from one place to the other and be done. So we know we're going to have a lot of cars end up on one side of town during certain types of, of, of situations, and we'll need to rebalance them. They're also going to be low on power. Um, so our team, our, our back-end systems notices that. If you, if you get into our one of our vehicles, you'll see our in-car hardware, which is monitoring 
monitoring everything. And we know that it is actually uh, we had was, the map here, right? yeah, it wasn't there a minute ago. It's not there anymore. Like, we see the real-time status of every vehicle on the fleet. And when it gets to a certain threshold, we dispatch a vehicle from our nerve center to replace that car. Okay. Um, when you're in a Volt, um, if you're driving and you happen to have it for a period of time where it's, where it's low on fuel, uh, we have a gas card in the car that you can pull into any gas station and use to fill out the, the, the Oh, interesting. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so you have all these cars set up, and you've got them like reorganized, so they're always within five minutes. Now, what are the ranges this works for? So if people like in Vegas want to get involved with it, like where do they, where can they guarantee a five minute? Set? So our core yeah. service area uh, includes roughly uh, downtown Las Vegas, um, straddling Charleston between Maryland and, and, and I-15, and just north uh, uh, to the 95 to 15 uh, um, on the north side of downtown. We actually, you have to, you can go to our website and see our our, our core service area in that area we offer a five minute promise. Now that's not to say that if you don't live here, it's not useful. We, we actually are, 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 we have three membership levels that we're, that we're testing right now. And one of them I call the insurance policy. And, and the reason I like that, that one is that it's very appealing to people who even commute in to, to the, the urban core. So let's say you work at City Hall, you work at Zappos, you work at a casino, your car gets, gets kind of crammed into a garage. You're, you're probably on the third or fourth floor of the garage. It's really tough to get out. Plus you don't want to have to deal with parking when you want to run a quick errand to grab lunch. Like say you wanted to go to Container Park or the Arch District right, for lunch. Right. Um, the entrance policy is perfect because you can grab a bike, a, a small car, or even a big car to run an errand, uh, and it's twenty. It's twenty five bucks a month. So you, you'll pay for on demand usage, yeah. and you'll just uh, buy credits as you go along. Um, so it, we we uh, we offer that level of service within this area, but we are we are very very appealing to people who don't necessarily live here. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the the when you're in the city, are you know the, the broader city, uh, obviously the larger levels of membership aren't going to be as appealing to you. They're just not as useful to you. Right. Um, but when you, if you live in the, in the broader Las Vegas area, we think, particularly if you spend any time downtown, uh, as we roll out Valley Plus, it's going to be a very convenient way for you to get home if you need to get home. Let's say you had too many cups of coffee at, 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 after work. Um, right. You, it is you know, jittery. You know you can get home, and most importantly, you can get back the next day. Yeah. Um, and, and when you're in the, the core service area, you'll be doing that within five minutes. When you're in the broader city, the guarantee is 20 or less. No, that's very cool. Okay, so let's talk about the tiers. So I know you don't have the exact pricing laid out, but you do have the type of tiers. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm get, I've heard that this is going to be like in the about the range of like what it costs to lease a car or own a car. Yeah, so it's actually cheaper than that. So, um, AAA actually estimates the, the the average cost of vehicle ownership at roughly 800 bucks a month, um, oh. and that's depreciation, right, maintenance, right. gas, etc. And it's funny because we don't. When I first read that number, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. But then I think about you know, when you drive, ways, it's like, yeah. well, you, you know, 20 bucks here, 20 bucks there. You, you, when you fill up with gas, you don't tally it all up. And, and what, what not, most of us don't realize is that we're spending a lot more money than our car payment on owning a car. Um, and according to the DOT, most cars sit idle 90 to 95%. Right, right, right. So you think about that all the time. If, if you just do basic napkin math, you're roughly, you're, you're wasting like 700 bucks a month, right? Right. So the way we've built our tiers is we look at, uh, we look at what what the average mobility need for someone is going to be. In the beginning, it's going to be challenging for people to estimate that because, again, you, you don't realize that you're driving your car 20 minutes a day. Like I, I was saying earlier, like I, all my trips so far have been like four minutes or five. Right, right. I went to, to Lowe's, shopped, and went home, and it was 22 minutes. And, and, right, like, and you're like, like, I thought that was a whole hour. You know, so so it's going to be difficult for us to, you know, to for for, for most of our early members to, to sort of understand what their utilization is. And, and again, that's why we have that really inexpensive entry level membership level that allows you to say, okay, I'm not going to commit to anything. I'm just going to see what my needs are, and then we're going to actually be watching your account uh, from a high level. And if we notice, like, hey, over the last two months, you've spent more money a la carte than you would. Oh, you're going to recommend people save money? Yeah. I mean, I, I think okay. for us, it's more it's more Very valuable cool. yeah. for, I think, we would rather have a long, our, our play is long term. Right. right. So Have us trust the company. Exactly. Yeah, like, even last week, we noticed that we, were, we accidentally overbuilt time for a couple of members, and we sent an email to seven or eight people and said, said hey, we've, we've loaded back, we've put an hour of time back in your account. Right. We, we goofed. And most, right. almost all of them wrote us back and said, I didn't even know. <laughs> right, right. Um, but that's just fundamentally how we are. So will you explain those tiers, though, mm -hmm. like um, with the four or five R? And uh, you mentioned Valley Plus before, too. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, our, so our, our currency is, is service hours and, and, and rides. So we have two distinct currencies, and every month your membership buys you two, some number of both of those things. Um, the time is the time that you're in a vehicle, and the, the ride credits are the number of times you ask for a ride. 
Um, so if you're a person who takes a lot of rides, you're going to probably use less time, but you're going to use more rides, or vice versa. Someone who drives a lot is going to use more time and less rides. Um, so as you progress up the membership levels, the, 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 the service hours and rides increase. Uh, so it's kind of an odd way of thinking about, about mobility. It's you're, you're paying by the hour in advance, um, and you have this, this sort of these two numbers that go down as you use things. And so for a person who pays, let's say, $250 a month for 25 hours uh, and 25 rides, which is not the final, not the final numbers, right. um, I might actually only use four hours of time a month, but I got 25 rides. Um, so, oh, gotcha. okay. so for the right, for the so. cost, it actually is fairly inexpensive. Um, but for someone like me who drives more, I'm going to use 20 hours and four rides, and I still extract the same amount of value and get the same you know level of of of, of service that, that makes my life better. So we our, our membership levels are pretty are, are built to be basically good for whatever your use case is. They're going to be valuable to people for different reasons from person to person. Um, so we're basically going to go from from a smaller amount to a larger amount to a high amount of service hours. Uh, unlimited use of the bike sharing uh, bike sharing uh, is available for every uh, member uh, as you begin to see the bikes rolling out in the next couple of weeks. And the uh, for all of our members that are above the, uh, the, insur the insurance policy level, unlimited point A to point B driving. So if, you're, if your trip is 20 minutes or less in a small car, you don't get built, built for any of that time. So for me, gotcha. I've driven, I think if you look at my account, I've probably had 10 or 15 trips in the last week. I have only used 13 minutes. Wow. <laughs> because yeah, I, yeah. all my trips, again, are like Just surprisingly five minutes. Right. So uh, so we, we, we really believe that, particularly for that premium customer uh, above the insurance level, which again is you know roughly 250 in that range or, or higher, uh, the unlimited station to station driving is going to be a game changer. Like right. you, you don't have to worry about getting the car home. You don't have to pay for it. It's just a it, it's it's a it's very much like bike sharing, but applied to cars. And I think it's going to change how people move significantly. Okay. All right. So I know you're going to walk us through and show us how it actually works. But walk me through step by step. Like what is the experience like when I am here at the nerve center and I want to get over I don't know to the cold spike? What would I? What would so the process be? Our goal is for for the moment you think you want to go somewhere for you to open the app. Um, okay. You'll think that like you, a lot, you'll, you'll sort of look at the at to the zip car car to go model and think I need to go to a station then I'll get a car at a station what you don't realize is that there may be cars closer to you than than you know um, we guarantee that it's been within five minutes right, of you right, so right. it's not necessarily the case that the car that you're you're looking directly at is going to be the car that you're going to get uh, you want to you want to go short medium long bike ride or drive and boom you're matched to a car and we tell you how to get there there's a lot of factors at play with with what car we match you to or what service we match you to it could be charge state. It could be um, the, the car that you're looking at. It's actually filthy. We know it's filthy, so we're not going to let a member take it. Yeah. All right. You want to go see one of these things in person? Let's do it. Okay. Cool. So we are ready to try this for the first time. I think I'm just going to... Oh, I did wish I would have known that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. You see the handles come out of it? So... All of these come with a Dell too. <laughs> part of part of the sponsorship deal you guys worked out. Okay, so how clean is the car inside? Yeah, yeah it's pretty clean. Is there any visible damage? No damage. Enjoy your trip. What's really interesting about Tesla is they have built a, a fairly sophisticated hardware platform, but it's always a great deal ahead of where they are from a software standpoint. So mm. there's sensors all over the car that to you just aren't even being right. They look like parking sensors, but what they're actually what they actually are is taking in data to help aid some of the self-driving features they're working on and so forth. So there's just... you're back. End trip. If you park in a parking spot, yes. Power itself off. Okay. Please grab all your belongings and trash before exiting. Scan card. And the scan card on the outside. Yes, like the outside. Right. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Okay, all right. So we'll do. So we made it back safe. We did. It was nice. It was really fun driving this thing, and I'm hoping a lot more people learn about this project and come down because it's an amazing Thanks, thing. So thank, thank you very much. Thanks for being a member. Yeah. I survived Dylan's driving. <laughs> it's, a, it's not that bad. <laughs> I should get a T-shirt. Go back and look at the <laughs> Thank you.